HTC's argument for the 10 is rather interesting. The company claims that general smartphone sales are down because the wow factor is gone. The strategy with the 10 is to challenge that, and it's time to see if all the obsession walks the talk. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and this is our review of the HTC 10. If 10 is for perfection, then a very tall order is being placed on the HTC 10. The company has come a long way to reinvent itself, and some products would even make you believe that it got lost in the process. The 10 is the company's new proposition towards an obsession it's been teasing for weeks, and so far, it seems that it has paid off. The hardware story is a clear indication of the HTC we remember. The sandblasted aluminum feels incredibly solid in the hand. The chamfered edges might have stirred a lot of concern in the leaks, but there is not a single rough edge around the phone, and the light reflection they generate is just gorgeous. A sheet of 2.5D Gorilla Glass 3 then accentuates the finish at the top, with elements like a matte fingerprint scanner only helping it stand out. The side buttons are also clickier than past iterations, and the firm feel just extends to the removable trays on the sides. This phone is a beauty in looks, and feels like a product that would definitely withstand the beating. The story doesn't end there. The 10 is actually IP53 water resistant. It may not be enough to get this phone submerged, but it should come in handy if you're caught in the rain, for example. Dazzling the view is a 5.2 inch Super LCD 5 that's now Quad HD in resolution. As with every LCD, blacks aren't the deepest, but this is probably the best LCD display I've seen in years. Color accuracy is top-notch, and the brightness is good enough for direct sunlight. HTC also decided to return to capacitive keys at the bottom, meaning that the display is fully used for content consumption. The buttons include a software tweak that allows you to toggle the menu when hard-pressed, and you can also set these to remain active along with the display. Other changes sadly included the miss of HTC's famous IR blaster, which is now replaced by a headphone jack mounted at the top, for better or for worse. And while we're talking audio, the most interesting change came with the approach to boom sound. We have a built-in DAC for studio quality 24-bit high-res audio, but instead of two front-firing speakers, we get a tweeter at the top and then a woofer at the bottom. Sound is very crisp, though loudness depends on the content, where you'll probably notice that theater mode isn't as loud for YouTube than the music mode for whenever you're playing audio. I figured the best way to examine that conversation. Still, what I love most is that covering the speakers won't muffle the audio, something that's completely rare for a smartphone. The killer feature on this phone is the 16 megapixel front. Boom Sound continues to support Dolby Audio. It now extends to enhance applications on a system-wide level, and you can even set personal audio profiles when using headphones. Sadly, US customers won't receive the high-res audio headphones in the box, which I highly suggest you give a try. Powering the show is a Snapdragon 820 processor matched with 4 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage that's expandable via microSD. There are some interesting tweaks to the display to improve responsiveness, and software enhancements even boost launch times. The result is a very fluid experience, with a phone that hasn't bogged down even with the 160 applications loaded. The same experience extends to graphics-intensive games, with fast load times and speedy performance all around. The aluminum does get a little warm after the first 10 minutes of gameplay, but nothing that would really hinder the experience. Overall, the HTC that spent two years cutting corners is now gone. By now, you've probably noticed that there is no such thing as compromise in hardware all around. Since we started talking about software, let's just say that a lot has changed. If you dig within the settings, you won't even find the version of Sense. HTC is calling this a unified and polished user experience and has joined forces with Google to fight fragmentation. It starts with eliminating bloat. HTC has decided to ditch duplicates and software and pick the best of both worlds when compared to stock Android. So instead of two calendar applications, there's just Google Calendar. Instead of two camera applications, there's just the HTC camera. Instead of two galleries, there's just Google Photos. We like that HTC kept the launcher since it continues to be one of the most polished and includes the best widgets in addition to great theming capabilities. 
The company does need to take a full step into improving its use of Quad HD with a denser grid of icons in the home screen. Instead, we see a new freestyle theme that lets you toggle elements within as app launchers. And you can also place app icons anywhere you want. The idea is rather good, but uh, only my kids actually like the existing themes. Blink Feed is back with faster responsive times, but if it's not your thing, don't worry, it's still removable. HTC Connect has also received some interesting enhancements by supporting Apple's AirPlay out of the box, a first we've ever seen in Android. Now, even with the launcher being HTC, apps have also adopted a closer look to material design, which we actually praise as it unifies the experience across HTC and Google apps. With the company's commitment to 15 days of software updates, the new change only makes the process easier for the team to change it. HTC also includes a new Boost Plus service that should be available for all Android phones very soon. In a nutshell, it helps you quickly boost your phone's performance by eliminating bloat and the necessary cache in a few seconds, something very useful. To complement the software, the company continues to support lock screen gestures, and there's a new ice view case that takes full advantage of them. The back is now a more flexible silicone, making it easier to place and remove, and instead of the funky dot matrix icons, things are now easier to read. Double slide down and you're greeted by the camera viewfinder, which then boosts the display for visibility on your photo. We've tested the HTC 10 for 9 days in New York City. As with previous devices, phone calls are solid through the earpiece, and speakers just make the experience better. Data speeds on AT&T sadly depend on where you are, but this phone is really good at retaining wireless signals in the toughest of places. The company claims up to two days of battery life, but uh, we didn't have really high hopes for the 3000 mAh power pack. No, the results didn't go as far, but they were above average with a solid 24 hours of use before the phone called it quits and four and a half hours of screen on time. Even better, the charger bundled in the box is now capable of Quick Charge 3.0, going from zero to full in a little more than an hour. The camera experience is where things are almost there. HTC has spent years calling its camera revolutionary, but with specifications that didn't really meet the standard. Today, hardware is finally there thanks to a 12 ultrapixel camera with f1.8 aperture and optical image stabilization. By ultrapixel, we mean that each pixel is of 1.55 microns and three times faster focusing than its predecessor. Photos during the day are gorgeous with deep color saturation and contrast. The new user interface is simplistic and includes quick access to different modes that include a pro feature for full manual controls. The only problem is actually something that HTC can fix. The software seems to need a little more tweaking in the focusing front. The system acknowledges focus through a green indicator in sound, but the camera hasn't really focused 50% of the time. During the day, this isn't really a problem, but during the night, it does fumble a lot. That being said, we received two software updates during our review period, and the camera has become very snappy at night. The selfie 5 megapixel shooter is also of 1.34 microns as well, all tucked under an 86 degree wide angle lens. The results are great, and that's mainly because this is the first selfie camera to include optical image stabilization as well. That combo of stabilization is clearly evident in video. This would be the perfect vlogging camera thanks to that, and even though stabilization isn't as aggressive as the Galaxy S7, it performs far better than average. Overall, when it comes to the camera, the hardware is here. All it needs is a little more software tweaking for it to reach a perfect 10. To conclude, it would be best if we reference HTC's plan with this phone. Calling this a perfect 10 is subjective as needs vary per user. What I do know is that this is not only the best HTC phone I've used, but also one of the best I've reviewed this year. HTC has clearly gone back to the drawing board and has returned with a product that points to a company that's obsessed with quality. For those of you that stayed away from HTC products for the last few years on the argument of compromise, I'm glad to report that those days are over. The HTC 10 is a great smartphone and one that I would highly recommend you give a try.
Folks, we've got a few videos of the HTC 10 already in our channel, and there are more coming very soon. Make sure you follow us on social media and hit that subscribe button down below for more videos like this one. In addition, you can also catch our videos on Vessel at Vessel.com slash Pocket Now. You can follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera, or on Instagram at Jaime Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you with the next one soon.